If you were huddled in a muddy trench during World War I, cold rain trickling down your collar and the smell of cordite hanging in the air, how would you heat a meal without drawing enemy fire? Soldiers faced that problem every single day, and what they came up with became one of the most ingenious survival hacks of the 20th century, the trench candle. This wasn't a candle for light or warmth, but a small, smokeless heater that could cook food, dry socks and melt snow, all without a visible flame. And here's the fascinating part. This forgotten little invention can still work today, whether you're camping, surviving a blackout, or just fascinated by lost survival methods. Let's uncover exactly how it worked, what made it so effective, and how you can recreate it using simple materials at home. During the First World War, soldiers on the Western Front lived in brutal conditions. Everything was wet, cold and rationed. Open flames were dangerous because light or smoke could give away a soldier's position. The armies issued fuel for cooking, but it was often scarce, and many soldiers had to improvise. Out of that necessity, the trench candle was born, a portable, flameless heat source that turned scavenged materials into reliable warmth. Soldiers made it from empty food tins, scraps of cardboard, and whatever fuel they could get their hands on, usually paraffin wax, animal fat, or even bacon grease. Once lit, it didn't burn with a visible flame. Instead, it produced a steady, glowing heat that could last for hours. At its core, the trench candle was simple but effective science. Soldiers would take a small tin, often a used jam or tobacco tin, and coil strips of cardboard tightly inside it with the corrugations facing up. The spaces between the cardboard acted like tiny wicks. Then they'd melt down wax or grease and pour it into the tin until the cardboard was saturated. Once the wax solidified, the soldier could light the top edge. The wax would melt slowly, drawing through the cardboard, producing a low, consistent heat rather than a flickering flame. This steady heat made it ideal for warming rations or boiling water in a mess tin placed on top. Because it used such minimal oxygen and produced little smoke, it could be used inside dugouts or behind the lines without attracting attention. Some soldiers even used multiple trench candles in a row, creating makeshift stoves capable of heating entire meals. The beauty of the design lay in its simplicity. It used materials that were always at hand, and once lit, it kept going with almost no maintenance. Accounts from soldiers describe trench candles as both a luxury and a lifeline. One memoir from a British infantryman mentions using his candle to warm bully beef and melt snow for tea, even in freezing conditions. Others used it to dry socks, heat shaving water, or thaw frozen rifle bolts. Some even modified the basic design, mixing wax with sawdust to make it burn longer, or wrapping the tin in mud to contain the heat better. The candle's portability made it invaluable, easy to carry, safe to light, and long-lasting. It wasn't just a wartime convenience, it was a morale booster. In a place where even a small comfort mattered, being able to eat a warm meal or sip a hot drink gave soldiers a psychological edge. That's one of the reasons historians and reenactors still study the trench candle today. It represents both innovation and endurance under impossible conditions. You can easily build your own trench candle using basic materials and a bit of patience. Start with a clean tin can, such as one from beans or soup. Cut strips of cardboard to match the height of the can. Then roll them tightly and fit them inside until the can is full. 
Next, melt wax, old candle stubs, paraffin, or even animal fat works fine. Then pour it slowly into the can until the cardboard is completely soaked. Let it cool and harden. To use it, light the top edge. It will burn slowly, producing a steady glow rather than a tall flame. Set a small metal pot, pan or mess tin above it on a couple of small stones or a wire rack, and you've got a simple heat source capable of warming soup, water or canned food. For survivalists and campers, it's a lightweight, reusable heater that works even in wind or rain. In emergencies, it can serve as a backup stove, a hand warmer, or even an improvised light source that won't draw unwanted attention. The brilliance of the trench candle isn't just in its design. It's in what it represents. It's a piece of human ingenuity born from hardship, proof that necessity truly is the mother of invention. In a world where modern survival gear depends on fuel canisters and batteries, this century-old method still works without either. It teaches us that resourcefulness and knowledge can outlast any supply chain. Modern survivalists, preppers and off-grid enthusiasts can learn a lot from these old methods. Recreating one today isn't just an exercise in nostalgia. It's a practical experiment in self-reliance. If you keep one stored in your emergency kit, you'll have a silent, dependable source of heat that requires nothing more than recycled materials and a match. When you light a trench candle today, you're doing more than melting wax. You're connecting with the soldiers who found hope in that faint, steady glow. It's a small reminder that history isn't just something to read about, it's something to practice, to test, and to keep alive. These forgotten survival techniques still have real-world value, not just as curiosities, but as tools that work when modern conveniences fail. If you found this deep dive into the lost trench candle as fascinating as I did, help keep this knowledge alive. Share it with fellow history buffs, experiment with making one yourself, and see just how well it works. And don't forget, subscribe to Backyard Wisdom for more hands-on history, where we bring the old world's forgotten inventions back to life one story at a time.